Although you can be the local of the young. Well, I'll do. I'll run the loop. Don't go around there, darling. You get the best view over there. You'll be able to look right across and everything. What I'll do, I'll run the loop for you, let you see it operating, and then I'll stop, and I'll just walk you right through it, explaining and everything as we go, okay? Any questions you've got, and you'll probably have plenty, wait till I finish, and then you can fire a will, okay? Mm -hmm. that fella there, that's all I cut with, right? It's only a sharpened piece of steel, of course. It's called our knife, but it's far more important than it looks. It's like a motor car that has no petrol, you don't go anywhere. Without that, we don't even start the machine up. It's called my knife, and my knife fits in there. You can see the one that's already there? The backing plate, a tension spring, and a wing nut. So we fit in behind that backing plate, it runs across that blade and cuts our yarn. There's our yarn cut at three quarters of an inch and it's all done by a simple sharpened piece of steel. There he is there. Now of course he's got to make his way back again so that we can do it all over again. Here we go. Lock and cut. And there it is again. Another row done by something just so simple as that. The yarn, the yarn has been cut. Our grippers have swung down and they're now down there like so. Now there's the yarn still in the grippers. It's not part of our weave yet. And it doesn't become part of our weave until this weft needle, that's the needle bringing the juice, has been all the way across, gone all the way back out, then we'll unlock and leave the yarn behind. But we can watch that. There's our weft needle making the way across. There he is there now, about halfway across. And he's reached the other side now. Two things happen. One, it gets caught by that little shuttle. Now that will give me the edge for the left hand side of our car. But more importantly, on his way back, there he is making the trip back. We've got a couple of inches to go. We've left behind a double shot of two. We call that the binding shot or the binding weft. It can only go one place. That's right across the centre of our yarn, and that's what ties or binds the yarn into our weave. Our gripper says, you've got the best view in there. I don't know why you keep running away from us. Well, I just don't want to stand in front of anybody. Our grippers are still locked. There's the yarn still in the grippers. They won't unlock until that needle there is all the way out. They've unlocked and left the yarn behind. A double shot of two has done his job. Another rope has been woven in. So it's simply this. We lock and we cut. We cross goes the wet needle, caught by the shuttle, and again we've left behind the binding wet. Again, our grippers are still locked, there's the yarn. They won't unlock, of course, until our needle is out. We've unlocked and left the yarn behind. And another rope has been woven in. So it's simply this. a hundred years old. This loom was built very early 1900s, but it's been married to a patterning system that is 200 years old. This is the Jacquard system. 
It was invented by a Frenchman, Joseph Jacquard, around 1800. Jacquard himself was a silk weaver and he's devised a system where we are using holes and blanks to create our pattern. You would have saw many other applications of Jacquard's idea. Many of Bandy could have been used for something else. Remember the roles for the piano and the player piano? Okay. Well, they're borrowed. They're using his idea, but they're looking for a note of music. We're looking for a colour of yarn. Others to use Jacquard's idea were for carousels, merry-go-rounds, the organ grinder, turning the handle of the organ. He would have a run of cards like that, knitting machine, computer punch card to print our cards on the computer. That's his idea. He was first 200 years ago. The amazing thing about this fella's idea is that after 200 years, we still use it today. And why? Because nobody else has come up with anything better. <laughs> That's the only reason, of course. We'll find out how it works. It's magic. Up the top, you see how my pattern cards go over and down behind that brass cylinder. Now, it is a square, but we call it a cylinder, and it's been drilled with many, many hundreds of holes. Can you pick that cylinder up then? Great. It's called the Jacquard, after our famous Frenchman. And what it does, it takes in on its face three cards at a time. That will select for me one row for our car. Now, I'm operating on numbered rows, 38, 39, 40, and so on. Nothing metric about this old loom. 27 inches wide. Narrow loom carpet is 27 inches wide, therefore 9 inches, 9 inches, 9 inches. Three cards gives me one row 27 inches wide, okay? Back to the jackard then. It takes it on his face three cards and selects a row. On its way back out, it turns over and places the next three cards on its face. That's the next row, of course, and so on. What we'll do, we'll watch what happens up top, then I'll bring you down below and I'll walk you through this system. It's really quite fascinating. Okay, select a row, next row. Select a row, next row. are a fixture. You can see them there on that shaft. They are a fixture in so much as that they can only go to the one place. Our grippers are going up and down to the same place all the time. And they're going up and down to what we call our top frame. Our top frame, as you can see, is black. In other words, if I had no pattern cards, I would be weaving you a completely black carpet. Now that wouldn't look too flash in the lounge room, would it? Wouldn't sell very well. So what we have to do, of course, is bring these other colours up to that top frame so our grippers can reach. In other words, folks, if I want that brownie or biscuity colour, the one, I, one there on the very bottom, now we want him in the back, then he's got to come all the way up to there amongst the black. Now look how far up he came, right up to there. But if I want that red or cherry colour, then he only has to come to there. That's not so very far at all. In other words, the lower down the colour is here, the higher up it has to come to take his place in that top frame so our grippers can reach. Now, how do we do it? What's Jackard's amazing idea all about? Well, we shall find out. Now, that's called a yarn carrier, simply because it carries our yarn. Connected to the yarn carriers are all these wires. Every carrier has his own wire. They all operate independently of each other. But most importantly, the other end of the wire is connected to one of these. Now you can see that from where you are. Yarn carrier, carrier wire. Do you see where the wires finish? Up on the top of my cradle up top? Great. Every one of these yarn carriers, by means of a wire, is connected to one of these. And this is called a peg carrier. They're my pegs, obviously, and our pegs are very important. Each one of these pegs corresponds with the colour down here. I've got black, grey, red, maroon, green and so on. Black, grey, red, maroon, green and so on down the line, OK? We'll come back to him in a moment. But these amazing cards, opposite every one of those holes and blanks all the way across, opposite every one of them, hole and blank is one of these. This is called a needle, it's on a return spring and under pressure, or when it meets resistance, it does that sticks its tongue out like an old loose. But it's called a needle and it's on a return thing. But it's important, it does it. If it doesn't do that, I'm going to have faults in the carpet. And he won't get the blame for it anymore, will he? Somebody else will. All right. Now we'll find out why. All those holes you see throughout my patterning system, all those holes you see mean absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. 
Remember up top you saw the three cards go in and out on the jacquard. We know opposite every one of these holes and blanks there's a needle like this. The holes mean nothing because they simply fit over the needles like that. Nothing happens, nothing changes, nothing alters. But where there's a blank, the blank will push the needle out like so. And opposite the needle, guess what? Are our colour pegs. Now this is how it actually works. Here's a good one for us to have a look at. Now look, in that particular road there, where all those holes are, they would just fit over all the other needles like that and nothing would happen, of course. But that blank, which is three, four down, that blank would push that needle out like so. That needle, in turn, would push out four down. We've just selected a colour. So that's simply how it works. The blank will push on a needle. The needle, in turn, pushes out the colour peak that's opposite, OK? Now, this is taking place all the way across. Every one of these rows or lines you see this is taking place. We then have a straight edge that comes along the back and where all these pegs have been pushed out, our straight edge picks them up like that. Now we're joined together down here, aren't we? So, when this lifts up in the air, the yarn carriers must follow and down, and up, and down. So picture this in your mind's eye, we'll see it in a moment. All those blanks all the way across are pushing on needles. The needle in turn pushes out the colour peg opposite. Our straight edge lifts them up. They go up in the air too because we're joined together by a wire. Then up go the grippers to grip. The knife runs across and cuts. They then cancel out. They drop straight back down again. Waiting for our next row, our next. That's a 200 year old technology. It's brilliant, isn't it? We're going to have a look at it. <laughs> Everything there is perfectly straight and level, isn't it? We haven't made a selection yet. <laughs> Staggered all over the place, aren't we? And our blanks are staggered all over the place. But we don't have a row unless them blanks are level. But our blanks are level. They are level here at the gripper. And they're staggered all over the place there because all those different colours have had to come from different places. Remember that brownie one we saw first on the very bottom? We lifted him all the way to the top. Well, we'll have a look for it. There's a single, another single, and a single there. None now until we get all the way. There's three together, and three together, and another single. And I've got a block there. They've painted the same level, the same height. What would that make? Same colour. Same colour, yeah. But anyway, we'll have a look for those brownie ones. There's a block of three and a block of three there. There's our block of three, there's our block of three, and there's that same colour across there. And there's these other couple of brown ones over here. But look what's happened. Already they've cancelled out, they've dropped back down, waiting for our next row, our next selection. And there's our next row, staggered all over the place again, but those blanks you see are level at the gripper, and so we lock, we cut, and we have a lock. Thank you. 